Hey, 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 it's your girl MJ and welcome to the Booty Call to Bride channel. I am your girl Michelle Tillman and y'all, this is season 12. I think it's episode 7. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll correct it in the title. But y'all, <laughs> what the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is going on, y'all? I gotta start with Chris and Paige every week because it's just like so much that I gotta get right into it. So there's, I'm gonna just say this, there's so many things that I wish I could say, but unfortunately I can't say everything I wanna say. I will just let you guys know that um, I started doing these because I have worked on tons of reality TV shows. So I just kind of find it fun and interesting to talk about my two cents on these shows. So let's get started. Paige, is doing her move-in day all by her doggone self because Chris decided that he wants to go back to Chicago after their honeymoon. Most people are going back to, you know, move in to the mutual space that Married at First Sight picked for them. But no, he goes to Chicago. So he comes back and then tells her, well, I need it. Okay, first of all, this is my problem with Chris. Why you keep doing all these shenanigans to have private conversations when you signed up for a public reality show? Like if you wanted privacy, you should have just kept dating your normal way and you could be private and nobody would know. He's always going in the shower, going in rooms and you know, so now he's like, they're showing all these words on the screen like, Chris and Paige didn't want production in on this part. So they like cut their mics and they start whispering and all this stuff and don't let them record. And he's telling her basically, she said that he said he decided he wants to be with his ex and that they're going to try to work it out because of the baby and he wants a divorce and he talked to a divorce attorney already. So I'm like, wait a minute. This becomes more crazy every week. Like, that means you've been thinking about this. You already knew as soon as this honeymoon was over, you was about to go talk to your lawyer and get it popping and get ready to get rid of Paige because you've used her up all you wanted to already. Like, this is straight bananas. So, then they get to the part of the show where, where Chris and Paige are supposed to talk to Pastor Cal. And so I know people are giving Pastor Cal the business on social media like, hey, how did you not catch this? You know, but hey, it's it's a very deep process from what I understand of how they pick these people. So I'm sure they did the best that they could, I guess. I mean, it seems like they felt Paige. It's it's awful. Um, so Pastor Cal's talking to Paige and like, you know, is Chris going to be joining us today? Like, where is Chris at? And she said, I don't know. Because, I mean, he said he wanted a divorce. Oh, how would she know where he's at, what he's doing? You know, poor Paige. And so, he tells, uh, she tells Pastor Cal, like, all the updates of what's going on. And he's just sitting there looking shocked. Like, he cannot believe that Chris has done all this. So, then they go to this scene of Chris and his skinny legs and his tight jeans. That I thought, what woman are they showing? And then I realized it was Chris. And his thick legs coming up and he was like you know busting in the room like was all good you know giving pastor kyle a, a handshake and then saying what's up Paige," or whatever he said i don't know i was so annoyed i just was like could not even i just could not even with him so basically he was like you know tell me what's going on and he tells him he wants to get back with his ex and so pastor kyle was like well didn't you break it with your ex for a reason like did that reason disappear like what happened with that and he was like well i ain't thought that far yet i just don't want nobody else raising my child and he's like if you're the parent you're gonna raise a child which is what i said last week if you're the parent you're gonna raise the child it's just might not be the way you planned it but you you still raise the child you might not just be in the same home so he has like no response and saying he didn't think about it. And Paige, I just, I'm so sad for her because back it up, Pastor Kyle was asking them about their sex life. And she was basically saying, which is the first time I heard it from this perspective, that she felt pressured to have sex 
with Chris because he made it seem like this is her wifely duty. This is what you should be doing. And she said they basically had sex almost every day since they've been filming or since they've been married. I'm like, what kind of self-esteem wreck are you to be allowing this man who's dishonoring you, disrespecting you, using you up and telling you stuff that he's not attracted to and then you still giving it up after he said he wasn't attracted to you girl something is seriously wrong with her like or she's doing some real good acting because i am just so shocked and appalled i don't understand what could possibly be warped in her brain and i'm not gonna allow her to keep blaming god and religion because that is not the guy that I serve, he don't tell you to do crazy stuff and stick around in situations that are toxic like that. <sighs> I, I I don't understand. So they had a little meeting with Pastor Cal, and then you know Paige is looking all distraught, and all Chris does is come up to her and like again whispering when you're on a whole reality TV show, like you don't want us to know what you're talking about. And then she over there giggling, <laughs> giggling and all stuff. And I'm like, okay, what did this Negro say that could possibly make you giggle after this whole situation? Ain't nothing to giggle about. Like, what are you giggling about? And then she's like, well, he said, you know, he's just trying not to fall in love with me and, and all this stuff. And she's like, okay, well, I'm going to walk away. And then they had this little scene in the, in the garage of the cars. Girl, get out. Get out. What are you thinking? I just want to just smack the dumbness off of her face off of her mind let's say a prayer for Paige heavenly father god you know what i'm not wasting my prayers on you Paige, because you are gonna do this foolishness no matter what he says no matter how much he disrespects you you clearly don't care about yourself we can no longer feel sorry for you we was feeling sad oh poor Paige. but at this point girl you're just being straight idiotic and let me save my anointed prayers for somebody else. I'm, there's nothing else to say. The next episode, they sitting down, showing Chris's uh, fiance, ex fiance, whatever that whole situation is. I'm like, this is this is this is too much. This too much. What is going on? This has never happened before. Like married at first sight. What are y'all doing? Like, can we go back to how it used to be? What are y'all doing? I don't like it anymore. It's like literally giving me a headache. Like. I got a little headache because I'm thinking about all this and it's just really bothering me. So anyway, anyways, I'm done talking about them. Um, let's go to Ryan and Clara. Ryan says, you know, they show, you know, they go to each other's houses and Clara's like, well, he's not as clean as he uh, looks. He's got stuff like thrown in the drawer. Oh, my biggest pet peeve is when you got like, a drawer full of stuff and you got like a sock hanging out the edge and you got your drawers hanging out the I hate that too. I get it. I get that. That is that is not real clean. He might be clean, but he might not be dirty. Maybe he's just junky. I don't know. I didn't look that detailed. But one thing I did notice is that when Pastor Kyle sat down with them, listen, Pastor Kyle challenge the heck out of ryan with that whole love thing and i was here for it i was like thank you for making this man realize that he has saved saying the l word love being in love with someone for so long like he's making it more than what it should be not saying that love isn't a big deal but pastor kyle basically said love is not a feeling because ryan said when i get this feeling i can't describe then i'll say it and he's like no love is a conscious decision and so when he said so you made a conscious decision to say we're in this thing and he said yes he's basically trying to tell you that is love making that conscious decision is love you, you should need to stop waiting for this feeling that you think is going to come and what it's going to be like and then he said um to uh they asked claire what was her biggest fear and she said that her biggest fear was that she would fall in love with him and then he would like leave her hanging and so pastor cal was like i don't think he'll do that and he was like no i don't think i will either he's like no you need to know that you won't do that and i'm like that's what i'm talking about challenge him make him step it up then there's Haley and jacob Haley, um <laughs> 
Jacob basically was calling her out. I'm going to just go real fast at this point. Jacob was basically calling Haley out because she was saying, I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar. He was like, but you lied. So you a liar. So she did lie. She did omit the truth about what was going on and with them hanging out. And then she didn't want to hang out. And so she said it was a girl's thing, but it really wasn't. So it's just so much to her. Um, basically, she was saying that you know, once she got to know him more, that's when she started to back off. She said to Pastor Cal whenever they were having their meeting that the that the the 80s thing is a huge red flag for her. It's not a red flag. It's as far as um like there's something wrong with him, but it's just they don't match. Like they don't go together. Like she just they have two totally different personalities and lifestyle types. It's like I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but they just don't they just don't mesh. And I don't think she's willing to, to, to budge on that. So it's pretty much over for them. I don't, he apologized for calling her over analytical or no, he said that she was over anxious or something to that extent, extent, but I, I don't think there's any hope for them. It's like, she's done. Like she might as well just leave in my opinion. Now, Brianna and Vincent, Brianna girl she was talking about how you know she's had to clean up behind vincent because he leaves his stuff all around when they was in the honeymoon can i just tell you welcome to wifing 101 you're gonna end up cleaning up behind your husband more than likely sorry to break it to you if you thought it was gonna be different sorry for every single person <laughs> woman who thought they wasn't gonna pick up no dirty draws you're going to pick up some drawers and some socks. That's just part of the territory. Sorry, that's a part of it. But one thing that I really don't like that she's doing is when Vincent got mad about that champagne now, he spilled the champagne and he got it on his shirt. And she was like, that's so Vincent of you. And so then later she found out that he was feeling agitated and in the closet he was like i'm tired of you disrespecting me you go stop disrespecting me and she's like well what do you mean give me an example like i get that part i'm that type of person too like hey if i did something wrong tell me an example of where i did it wrong so i know and understand it so i can fix it so i get what she was saying with the get me and give me an example but he just saw it as a glaring obvious thing of course me watching it as the person watching the show I could see that that bothered him in that moment and that his energy shifted but she did pick up on that which is good but girl you have a sensitive man who has told you he feel like he want to be uh respected from you by you all the time and he said he don't feel like he needed to give you an example now that I don't think was right if someone says, I want to do better, give me an example. Give them an example so there's no excuse for them not to understand. However, I think she could have been able to pick up on it. And then she said she didn't want to talk about it no more. Look, when you marry, you got to go ahead and talk about it. You got to go ahead and talk about the things that are uncomfortable now so you can avoid having all this mess in the future. So Brianna's got her way of doing things and her way of wanting things her way but that mouth girl hmm, i'm hoping that he can audibly express exactly the instances where he felt disrespected and some examples of maybe how he could feel supported like he did give an example with the whole uh, champagne on the shirt. He was like, instead of getting me a towel, well, you like, that's so Vincent. Does that mean you think I'm an idiot? Like, that's how he took it. That's how far he took it in his mind. And she was like, well, that's not what I meant. But honestly, sis, you can't, what you meant and how he took it doesn't matter if they're not the same. Everyone has a right to have their own feelings. So even though you might not understand and relate to it, that doesn't negate that what that was how he feels. So hopefully they can, I think they can get through that. They just have to be willing to keep talking about the issue until it's resolved. Like get all the way down to the bottom of it and not just kind of rub the surface and then be mad for a few days and not really talk about it. And then it happens again. Like you just got to get down to it and hopefully they can dig a little deeper and work through it. So the next couple, Virginia and Eric. Okay, this was another one. When Pastor Kyle comes on, it's like, 
come on, sir, call these people out. So Virginia and Eric, they were basically talking to him. The biggest thing from their whole discussion was she said she won't be able to fall asleep drunk on one of her homeboy's couches after her Thursday, Friday, Saturday drunk nights because this is not a phase for her. This is her lifestyle. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give her this. When I was 22, 23, I didn't think there was going to be no end to my party lifestyle either. I think maybe she's just young and doesn't understand that it doesn't feel like a phase when you're in it. When you look back, you're going to be like, oh, I can't believe I was xyz but right now because she's so deep in it like she doesn't see it as a phase i do think it is a phase I'm not saying that there's not 40 year olds who are still out turning up every thursday through saturday but i do think it's a phase for her i think that she will eventually grow out of it i feel like she's hiding something with all the partying and the drinking like there's something underneath and i know we know she has the daddy issues we know she has certain things going on but i think that she will grow out of it if she desires to, but I think she had a reality check when Pastor Cal was like, now my wife ain't gonna sleep on no other man's couch because it's my job to protect her and I don't want her to be in a position where somebody could possibly, you know, take advantage of her or whatever. And he's like, oh, she's like, no, these are my friends. They're like my gay best friends. And he's like, but are they gay? They're not. So in that case, you need to bring your tail home because you are married. I don't know any married man who's going to be like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sleep on homeboy couch. I don't care. Go ahead. What man is going to say that, girl? Girl, no man is going to say that. I don't know any. If you're a man and you don't care that your wife gets wasted at that and sleeps on a man's couch, plans to, this is what she do, has no intentions to change it, please tell me that you would be okay with that. I want to know where those men are at. I don't believe too many of those men exist. Um, so that's their whole little thing that they're working through that Pastor Kyle brought up. And wow, did I go through everybody that quick? Haley and Jacob. Yep, I sure did. So that's all I have for y'all this week. And I hope that you will tune in next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please put in the comments what you think about all this with Paige, Chris, Haley, Jacob, Clara, Ryan, Brianna, Vincent. It's just it's too much. Y'all tell me what you think. And I'll see you next week. Bye.